Hello, Paul Tranny here, and I'm excited just to show you some of the latest updates to some of the major apps uh, for Creative Cloud users, specific for web design. Now, keep in mind, Muse was updated last month. We had a huge update to Reflow. Edge Animate is actually going to get updated soon. But I want to focus on some of the apps that have been updated for web designers. Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, and even InDesign was updated. But those are the main ones I'm going to highlight. In fact, the biggest feature available to Creative Cloud users is under the Fonts tab because now you can sync your Typekit fonts to your desktop just like I did right here. So I'll select that. And this is great for web designer because if I was doing a web design, well, typically I can use all these various fonts available for web use, but how do I represent that font in Photoshop? Well, you now have fonts available for desktop use. So you can sort by fonts, select a font that you want to use. Maybe I want to use Lexia, sync it to Creative Cloud. In fact, let's launch Creative Cloud application and we'll watch it happen, syncing. Notification, done, Lexia, synced, didn't have to do anything, it's awesome. I'm going to sort by handwritten fonts uh, for this design I'm working on. I want something a little more natural, just sync one more font, just like that. All right, so I, I've synced two fonts, and I don't even need to restart Photoshop or anything. In fact, I already have these files open, and I don't need to restart Photoshop. This font, such as Felt Tip Roman, is available in Photoshop, in PowerPoint, in any desktop app. Good to go there. All right, excellent. I love that. All those fonts available at my fingertips, but let's move on because there's more I want to do. And I can talk about perspective warp and some of the other designery features, if you will, but I want to focus on just the production stuff that's really going to help you out. And this is one of them, a feature that's been asked for for a while, is the ability to place linked files. Okay. There's been place embedded, but place linked files. So you can be working in a team environment or even just be sharing a file across multiple PSDs. And all you have to do now is update this one file. And since it's linked, it's going to update across all of the PSDs. So I'm quickly placing this Illustrator file. And uh, again, it could, be, it could be a JPEG, a GIF. It doesn't matter. It could be anything. But just placing in that file, and notice right down here, it gives me this icon. It says, hey, you know what? I'm actually linked externally. So what I can do is I can place that here. And just like in this About page, I've placed it there as well earlier. So if I happen to jump out to that particular file, and maybe you have the graphic designer working on this file, if they happen to make a change to it, as I'm doing right now, just quickly changing the color and saving it. You could see it updates. Let's check our other file. That file updates as well. I could have just as easily just double clicked on it and edited it that way too. All right, so um, let me show you just two more features in here because notice uh, if you ever move this file, Okay, or it gets deleted or something, don't think that uh, you're lost or dead in the water. In fact, as I go back into Photoshop, it recognizes that it's moved, but it also stores a high-res version of that file. So don't worry, you don't have to package, collect for output, anything like you have to do in InDesign. It's good to go. If I do double-click on it, it will ask for it. Okay, in fact, if I right-click, notice how I can uh, resolve the broken link, I can replace the content, or I can even update all modified content if I have more than one linked file. Uh, but nonetheless, I can resolve that broken link by pointing to that file just like that. There it is. Good to go. But let's change this file some more now because I want to get into Illustrator. Because on my desktop, I want to open up this file. I'm going to show you three features in here really fast. And the biggest one is Live Corners. So I'm going to use the Direct Selection tool and just click on a corner here. See how I get that control point and I get that curved line? You guessed it. That means I can curve out that particular corner. Okay. In fact, I can come in here, click on that again, move that back. And if I just click on the object as a whole, I can do all four corners at once if I want to. Or even right up here, I can do it numerically as well. Okay, so I can get that the way I want it. That also goes for any 
any type of shape just like I have these mountains I get these control points I can manipulate them accordingly as well all right good to go uh, another thing I can do and I'm used to drawing with the pen tool pencil tool has not been that effective for me in the past but it actually has been revamped it's a lot more like the pencil tool in uh, good old flash okay in fact as I double click on it this is what I'm referring to it was just set to accurate which means it gave you exactly what you drew no matter how horrible well you can swing it down to say more to the smooth side and as I click OK if I decide I want to you know try to draw another mountain right here and I'm doing this really horribly on purpose see how it smoothed out all those various uh, curves you can see how that works so those are my my two shapes and I can even uh, have more fidelity with it and control it's been revamped as well as some of the control points okay so that's another huge feature for web designers last one I'm going to show in Illustrator as I click over to uh, this particular uh, logo as you can see in fact this is part of my larger web design that I was working on uh, but nonetheless I need to output this as SVG okay so quick new feature which I have here as I save this and I'll do a save as to my desktop as SVG saving it okay I'm gonna go into more options as we take a look right here responsive that's basically just gonna make it flexible so everything's gonna be percentage based it works great when I'm using uh, reflow or Dreamweaver or placing this on the web I can output it or I can click this little button just to show you what this looks like in a browser there it is as I scale it up and down you can see how it adjusts it does cap at the original size I can always control that uh, again with the actual SVG code that gets generated but that's set up for me as well now there are a ton more updates I encourage you to check out creativecloud.com as well as my website we will have updates to additional apps very soon as well so stay tuned